Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 8 in the CSRF module titled CSRF with Broken Referrer Validation. Before we continue with the exercise, I'm happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by Integrity. Integrity is Europe's number one ethical hacking and bug bounty platform. Although it is European based, you do not have to be from Europe to hack on their platform. When they first approached me to sponsor my videos, I thought that they were the perfect sponsor because the majority of you who do watch my videos watch them because you do bug bounty. I've even gotten a ton of messages telling me that my videos help people find bugs in real world applications, which honestly makes me really happy. So if you're interested in earning some money on the side by hacking applications legally, sign up to Integrity using the link in the description and make sure to tweet at me or comment below when you do find bugs in their platform, because again, it makes me really happy to hear these stories. All right, enough about our sponsor, let's go back to the exercise. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Go down, select the learning path, go down, select cross site requests forgery, and then go down to the last lab titled CSRF with Broken Referrer Validation. All right, let's get started. This lab email change functionality is vulnerable to CSRF. So we've got the vulnerable parameter over here, the email change functionality. It attempts to detect and block cross domain requests, but the detection mechanism can be bypassed. So they have some kind of defensive mechanism against CSRF by blocking cross domain requests. Again, cross-domain requests are requests that originate from a different domain than the domain of the application, but this detection mechanism can be bypassed, so it's faulty in, in some way, and that's what's going to allow us to exploit the CSRF vulnerability. To solve the lab, use your exploit server to host an HTML page that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address. So the goal over here is to exploit the CSRF vulnerability to change the email address of the user, you can log into your own account using the following credentials, and we've got the credentials over here. All right, let's access the lab. Okay, next click my account and log in with the credentials that we were given. And this is the email change functionality that is vulnerable. It's the exact same one that we used um, in previous labs. Right, the next thing to do is open up Burp Suite Professional. And I'm using the professional version because in the first part of the lab, we'll use the CSRF POC generator in order to generate the CSRF uh, exploit. However, in the second part of the video, we'll only use the community edition and script the exploit on our own. So if you don't have the professional version, stick around to the second part of the video. All right, next we need to set Foxy Proxy to send requests to Burp. And now if we change the email address to test.test.ca, it should be intercepted in burp, and it is. Let's send this to repeater, turn this off, and work from repeater. All right, if we click on send, we get a 302 redirect. We follow re the redirection, and you could see that the email was changed to test at test.ca. All right, if we go back, we said that in order for a page to be vulnerable to CSRF, it has to satisfy three conditions. So in order to be vulnerable to CSRF, you have to have one, a relevant action. So the thing that you're exploiting has to be relevant. And the way we would define relevant is that if you were to exploit it, it has to have detrimental effect to the client or to the victim. If it doesn't, then it doesn't matter if it's vulnerable to CSRF because there's no end goal over there. Now, in this case, what's vulnerable is the email change functionality, which is definitely a relevant action because if me as an attacker can change the email address of a user, so what I could do is use uh, that email address in order to reset the password of the user's account. And when I hit the reset button, the passcode is going to be sent to me because I control the email address and I've changed it. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is change the password of the user and fully compromise the user's account. 
And so this definitely is a relevant action and it checks off. So the next condition is cookie-based session handling. So the application has to use uh, cookies for session handling and it does. So the session is handled using a cookie called session. The third condition is there has to be no unpredictable request parameters. In this case, the email address is the only parameter which is predictable because we will change it to an email address that we know and we control. There's no other parameters like a CSRF token, which would have been predictable because I can anticipate what that token value is upfront. So this is definitely satisfied. So again, at first glance, this looks like it's vulnerable to CSRF. However, if we try the CSRF attack, so we're going to right click engagement tools and then generate CSRF POC, click on options, include auto submit script, click regenerate, and then let's test this in the browser, hit copy and see if it works. Hit send and it doesn't. So similar to the previous lab, we get invalid referrer header. So what the application is doing is it's checking the referrer header to ensure that the origin of the CSRF script is the same origin of the application. So if we go back to proxy, HTTP history, and look at our exploit code, you could see that the referrer header is burp suite, and that's different from the domain of the application, which is this over here. And so it gave us an invalid referrer header. Now let's go back to repeater. So the first thing we did in the previous lab to test the referrer header for CSRF attacks is remove the referrer header and see if the application allows us to submit the request. So I'm going to remove it completely, hit send, and I still get invalid referrer header. So the next thing I usually try, so that's step number two, is check which portion of the referrer spell that correctly header is the application validating so sometimes what applications do is they don't validate that this entire referrer header is equal to the domain of the application and instead just validate that the domain of the application is contained in the referrer header and so this way, what we could do is we could keep this as a query parameter. So first I'm going to remove the my account and make sure it works. And it does. All right. So what I'm going to do is because I don't have control over this domain, what I'll do is let me say hacked domain.com slash and add the domain of the application as a query parameter. I can do that because this is a domain that I control. All right, let's hit send and we get a 302. So what that means is the application in the back end is taking this referrer header and instead of validating exactly the entire referrer header, all it does is it checks if the domain over here is contained in the referrer header. And it is because you could see it over here. And so it allows the request to pass through. And that's how we're going to be able to bypass the referrer defense mechanism because it's implemented incorrectly at the back end. All right, so to do that, we go back to the POC generator. Again, we're using Burp Suite Professional, but if you wanna see how we do it using the community edition, stick around for the second part of the video. So what we're going to do over here is we need a way in order to ensure that when this runs, the referrer header is changed to this over here or to whatever we're using. Let's say in this case, it would be Burp Suite. So let's remove that because it's Burp Suite that's hosting the script. And then the name of the application itself. All right, so to do that, we're going to make use of this method over here. So history.push state. And what this method does is it adds an entry to the browser session history stack. So it has three parameters. The first one is uh, the state object. The second one is the title. And the third one is the URL. Now, for this attack, we're only going to focus on uh, the URL parameter. This parameter can be either relative 
or absolute. If it's relative, then it's resolved relative to the current URL. If it's absolute, then it has to be the same origin as the current URL. Otherwise, it'll throw an exception. So you can't simply just say that the URL over here is this right over here. So this is going to throw an exception because the browser is going to check if this absolute URL is equal to the origin of the request. So where this script originated from. And in this case, it's not because the script originated from burp suite and not from, you know, this random number dot web security academy dot net. And so it'll throw an exception. So instead, we need to be a little bit smart. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a relative URL. So we're going to say, it's okay if we have the domain of, you know, where the script originated from, which is Burp Suite. All we want to do is add a query parameter to this domain. And the query parameter is this domain over here. Okay, so let's click on test in browser, hit copy, and then test it in the browser. Hit enter, it submits the request, and we did not change the value over here, so we can't see if it actually changed it or not. But we don't get an invalid referrer header, which is a good sign. So let's say test3 at test.ca. And then again, test in browser. Hit copy. Put it in here. Hit enter. And here we go. It says the email address changed to test3 at test.ca. Now, we don't see the congratulations you solved the lab because we did it using the Burp Suite exploit server instead of the one at the Web Security Academy. So let's do it over here. Let's copy this. Put it in here. Store the exploit. And in this case, yeah, let's keep it at test three, store the exploit and then deliver the exploit to the victim. And we still don't get a congratulations, you solved the lab exercise. And the reason behind that is as a security mechanism, some browsers omit any query parameters that come with the referrer header. So they strip them out of the referrer header, which is why this is not working with the exploit server. So to bypass that, we need to add this string over here. So refer policy is unsafe URL. And this way the string won't be, uh, and this way the query string over here won't be stripped out of the refer header. Now I'm not sure if why I don't need to include it in my general exploit versus when I'm using the exploit server, it might be due to what the exploit server is using at the backend. So again, store it and then deliver the exploit to the victim and see if it works. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by using Burp Suite Professional. Now let's script the exploit on our own. I'm going to close POC generator because we no longer need it. Let's close this over here. And let's go to our HTML document. Okay, so the first thing I do is create the HTML element because this is an HTML document. The next thing to do is create the body element. That's going to contain the content of the page. So first thing is script history dot push state. And we're going to add the re relative URL of the application. So again, it was this. Let's copy this and put it over here. And remove HTTPS and assume that this is a query parameter. All right, the next thing to do is create a heading element that says hello world. So this is what the user is going to see. And then the form element. And in the form element, we're going to say the action is equal to the URL of the change password functionality. So that's right over here. Let's hit send so that it doesn't time out. Okay, that's good. It hasn't timed out. Let's copy this. That's the URL of our application. 
and we put that over here add https and then we need the path to the change email functionality which is right over here all right the next thing to do is add the method So the method that we're using is a post method. We'll add post. And then let's say the ID because we want to reference this form later in the script. We'll call it CSRF form. All right, the next thing to do is add the parameters of the form. And so in this case, it's only one parameter, which is the email parameter. So that's input type to be equal to hidden. And the name is equal to email. Again, we get that from the request. And let's say the value is equal to test5 at test.ca, so the email address that we control. And let's close this off. Let's hit send again so that it doesn't time out. All right. Um, the next thing to do is add a script element and say document dot get element by ID. And we want to get the CSRF form. So this is why we added an ID element for the CSRF form and we're going to hit submit. And what that does is it submits the form automatically when the user loads the page. Now, I don't want the user to see the form being submitted. I want to be a bit stealthy. And so what I'm going to do is add an iframe element and submit the request in an invisible iframe. So let's say style is equal to display none and we'll say the name is equal to csrf iframe and we need to tell the form to be submitted in the iframe and so we'll add target over here to be equal to the csrf iframe okay this looks good Let's hit send again to see if it timed out and it didn't. That's good. So the last thing to do is to uh, host the script on our own web server. And I'm seeing that there's a mistake right over here. So let's close this off and here we go. So this looks good. All right. So to do that, click on terminal, new terminal, and then we're going to host a simple Python server on localhost port 5555. All right, and so this Python server right now is serving my script. So the next thing to do is send the malicious URL to the victim user. So it was csrflab08.html and hit send. So when the user clicks on the link, all the user sees is hello world. However, in the back end, what should have happened is that the email address got changed to the email address of the attacker, which is test5 at test.ca. So if we go back and see if the email address got changed, and it did. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by first exploiting the vulnerability using Burp Suite Professional and then scripting the exploit on our own. And this concludes the CSRF module. If you like the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that it reaches a wider audience. Also comment below what you learned and what you would like to see more of in the future. Thank you and see you in the next video.